Hi everyone. Good morning, good evening, good night. First of all, I would like to know if you are hearing me well. If there is any problem with the audio today. Welcome everyone. So at last you can hear me well. So today we meet to work with the sacrum chakra related to the emotional week. Remember that we are still in the month of the constellation of Virgo, so this means the concept of the I am related to the I analyze. And this is why we are like in a school, writing down, doing some tasks, more homeworks, <coughs> and um, trying to analyze as much as we can from ourselves. So today we have a beautiful issue to discuss, which is the manipulation. And manipulation is one of all these concepts that we are trying to uh, give a new meaning. The reason why it's, so, uh, it's a heavy issue is because we used to relate manipulation with the concept of controlling something. So uh, now we think that it's control, but the origin of the word is not control. So this is why we have to go back to the origin of the main meaning of this concept so we could understand why it has become a concept of control. So the first thing that we have to acknowledge to understand all this we are going to speak about is that everything that we perceive from the world and that we speak about the world is conditioned by our preconcepts and our prejudgments. So let's go to understand what those two words mean. So the first one, preconcept, means that something that has been conceived before. So concept comes from the word conception, that it is related with the idea of conceive something, of have give birth to something. So a concept is something that I originate over an idea. So for example, a concept is saying that the skies are blue. And why is a concept? Because it's just um, the, because the sky is not blue. But I created the idea that the skies are blue. I generated this idea of how it is blue. But, for example, um, um, the skies were never blue. Just pay attention and look at the, at the sky. It's, it's not blue. But we have the concept that the skies are blue. So I will create a preconcept that everything that is wide and relax me and makes me feel like celestial in heaven, something like that, will be all related with the color blue. So basically what I do in a preconception is that I adjust, I adjust the, the idea of the skies as, as blue, even in places or other skies, other planets, and other dimensions, um, other celestial realms, as if the skies are blue. Because I think that that's how it should be. Hmm? Uh, that's mostly what a, a preconcept is. So basically what I, what I do is to build my whole life based on preconcepts. So basically, a preconcept is useful in our evolution because your body, your brain, says, okay, if now I have this concept, so thinking that everything would be kind of the same helps me to survive, to go through the reality and not to have to think and adapt to every one of the new realities around me. Hmm? In the other hand, we have the prejudgment. Uh, so the word uh, prejudge comes from the word judge, which is the origin in Latin. The origin of the word is judis, 
that means um, to guide or to indicate. So for example, to charge means to put each thing in a different, in a, like in a catalog of um, categorize each one of the things. So this is why we say this is bad, this is good. It helps to divide the things and make categorization. To judge is basically to put order in the things. So basically, pre-judge would be that once I put something in a box, in one of the concepts, what I do is to put all the rest of the things that are similar to that thing, I will put it in the same box, even if I don't know it, but they're similar, so I put it in the same one. That's prejudgment. To prejudge would mean that now that I have experienced something, that I acknowledge something, and I created a box of this concept, what I will do is that everything that is similar to that, I will put it in the same way and understand it as the same. So this is not bad. This is something that is useful for our biological system that helps us to earn time. So the reason why we do this and why it's so useful for biology is because if we wouldn't have that, we, we wouldn't be able to, to just keep going because every minute we would have to analyze everything because we would have no idea of how to understand the world. So we have to analyze minute per minute everything that is around us. So basically, um, it's an evolutionary aspect of us that helps us to uh, keep going and to put our attention in other things so we uh, and, and be free from analyzing everything constantly. So let's go to a very easy example that through thousands of years it was naturalized and now we don't even think about it. So for example, this, this thing, the, this concept would be colors, okay? Colors. We don't usually think about the colors that we have around. We don't think about them because once we, we did it. So now in our head, there's a box that has a layer that says colors. And suddenly, without thinking, the brain is just putting everything in that box that says colors, okay? Every color, you don't think about it, just put it there in colors, and that's it. And inside the box of colors, there are many others with a level that says, for example, blue. So I don't, I, I don't think about um, the difference between blue, light blue, cyan, dark blue, whatever. You're, you don't think about that. Whatever kind of blue that you see, you just put it in that box with a level that says blue. That's it. So basically, this helps us to just keep moving, just keep going, and not to be focusing in everything that we have around. So imagine that it's not only colors. There's a box called mom, there's a box called love, there's a box called white rays, another one black rays, whatever. <clears throat> you have many boxes, so whatever is related with that, you just put it in the box. That's it. And you put it there. So as I said, prejudgments and preconcepts are useful in evolution. But there's another thing there that I wrote in the blog. Let's get this example, which is very easy to understand this. Fire. Fire is an easy concept to understand uh, the next explanation. So picture this, when you see fire, it's wonderful. The first time you saw fire, it's like, wow, fire. And suddenly, naturally, what is beautiful, you just want to touch it. So you go there and you burn, you get burned. So your neurological system identifies fire with pain. So suddenly, fire is set inside a box that the label says pain. So inside, inside pain, you have another box saying 
burn. So you put fire there. The thing is that when you um, when you would see through your life stuff like uh, anything that is related with fire in, in, in your life, whatever you can see that is related with fire, your head will, will identify it as pain. Hmm? So the thing is that if I put fire and everything that comes with it into the box of pain and just identify fire with pain, I won't be able to discover the possibilities and the abilities, the potentials of fire. So this is the reason why some uh, the, the concept of prejudgment and preconcepts are bad for us in some parts of the evolution. Because if we keep ourselves with that prejudgment of fire, we wouldn't we wouldn't discover the potentials of fire. So I have to go outside my judgment to get away from my judgment in order to find that the fire can help me cook, that fire can warm a house, can heat a house, that fire can help me to create medicine, to make alchemy, to produce tools, to make light. And this is the reason why everyone in our lives, we have by nature prejudgments and preconcepts. So this is why when we start to become aware of ourselves, there is a part of us that says, I have to live to get rid of prejudgments. And this is when we say, we don't have to judge others. But remember very well, what it is to judge is to earn time so I don't have to analyze everything constantly. So the judgment is a bad thing? No. What is the negative thing? Is the prejudgment. And the reason why the prejudgment is something negative in our lives is because when we become aware of ourselves, we should not be moved by reaction. We should be moved by action. So prejudgment is trying to tell me that everything that I watch in the world is pushed by an experience from the past. So it's not myself who understand reality, it's my prejudgment. By understanding this basic concept is how we can understand or realize if we are being aware, conscious or unconscious. So basically, when a person is uh, unaware, is unconscious, is moved by prejudgments. When a person is conscious, is moved by judgment. Do you get the difference? Judgment is the one that helps you to organize reality that gives the importance and the place to each part of the reality. Prejudgment just deny a great and a big part of that reality. This is why one of the main things that we have to learn in our lives is to know how to be, um, how to judge properly and not to prejudge. Okay. I hope you could get a bit from where I'm speaking. So basically what, um, what we usually do as a spiritual people in the path of consciousness, uh, is that, um, whether we, uh, judge a lot or, or we prejudge a lot or whether we say we don't have to judge anything. We used to go to the extremes, but it's not like that. In order to be coherent, 
in the reality, we need to have judgment. So basically what we have to do is to, the judgment means to know how to discern, okay? Uh, to put the things where they are supposed to be. And look at this. It doesn't mean to, to say what is good and what is bad. It means to put the things in its own place, to organize, without saying this is bad and this is good. And this is one of the most difficult things that we have to learn how to do it because we all used to prejudge. So this is why yesterday when we hear the words religion and sect, suddenly a box is open here that says, oh my God, sect, bad thing, religion, bad thing, I don't want it, I don't like religion, um, massive suicide, whatever. And today we have the word manipulate. So naturally, when we take this box outside of manipulation, inside this box, we take it outside and we say, politicians, church, government, the devil, Illuminati, they're all in that little box. But for sure, within this box, inside this box, you don't have the original word the original meaning of manipulation. So manipulation comes from the Latin words that means to do things with my hands. This is why in English you have handle as another way to say manipulation, to handle this situation, hand. So imagine that, um, that to manipulate is to be able to use your hands to do stuff that creates also the ability to manifest, that comes from the Latin words, to do a party, a party with your hands, that's manifest, to make a party with your hands, a celebration. So in the origin of times, manipulation means to be able to create things with your hands. Hmm. So through the evolution, humans were able to develop the mind. So they started to be able to make things and create things with the mind. So we as humans, we're not only able to manipulate the matter, but also to manipulate the mind. To manifest with your hands is to, and the matter is to, uh, to manifest, to create, to, to to manipulate with your hands is to manifest something, a tool, something real. And to mm, manipulate with your mind is the ability to manifest a conception, a concept. So basically the person that is able to create with its hands something outside or a belief in the world of the ideas is the person that has the power, the inner power, to use the energy of the womb, of the sacrum. Remember the sacrum, that was the one absorbing all the nutrients of the food so you could create energy. So it used that energy to manifest. What happens if a person loses its own power and doesn't have the amount of energy necessary to create? what this person would do. So that person can't be able to do anything by itself. So it starts to look for this energy outside. So in other people. So how do you get to these other people? By the links. We spoke about this yesterday. You remember the emotional links that we have with others. So what do I start to do? To manipulate the links of the motions that I have with others so I can receive energy. Have you seen how easy this, um, this concept of manipulating my own energy has become in something very different when I start to manipulate the energy of others? So what I become? A parasite. 
I start to live from others. And how do I do for the other people to give me energy if energy is emotion? So it's easy. What I do is to manipulate their emotion. So this, we always do this, all of us. So I don't want to read anyone's, anyone here saying, it doesn't happen to me. <laughs> so why all of us do this? Because we are a network, we are interconnected. So it's very difficult for a being that is constantly connected with others to not exchange energy. It's very difficult. We all do that. But we can begin by understanding that we do it. One of the main things that we have to do when we realize about this is, first of all, to identify which emotions and with whom. The second step would be to try to ask for that energy but in a different way. Some, uh, let's make a very easy example that I myself had used sometimes, which is um, when you need a hug, maybe you need a hug, and what you do is just to make like a sad face and do like this. So this creates an emotional link that the other person would interpret it very easy that you need a hug. But the way in which I did it was energetical manipulation. So how can I change that? In a different way. Instead of acting the need of a hug, what I just do is to go to that person and say, can you hug me? Can you give me a hug? It's very easy. And that changed everything. But then we have the third, the third step. The third step is that when I need a hug, I hug myself. It seems absurd because we are not used to this. But the, the body feels exactly the same reaction. But the result is something very important that we call empowering and I am speaking about this like this is a third step because in order to arrive to this I have to have experienced the, the other two before many times because it's in the second step when I allow myself for the first time to speak to the others with truth of what I need I am empowering myself and what I am doing in that moment is to take him back the power of my own energy so when a person starts to get empowered that person starts to manipulate its own energy without the need of manipulating the energy of others so I start to become my own creator. And this is the most important key to understand the sentence that everyone has told you that you are the creator of your own reality. In that moment, everyone would say, yes, I am the creator, I create everything. But the question that we do after this is like, but why is not working with me? <laughs> And the reason why is, is because it's, it's not just like that, like, yes, I am the creator. I have to know how to handle my own energy in order to be able to create my own reality. This is why we have a lot of work to do. When we start to be real, when we start to realize about that we lose, that we, that we lost the power, suddenly you start to say, oh my God, my power, where is my power? So you, you go to the box of power and inside the box of power, it is the government, politicians, the church, um, Illuminati, again, all of them. So suddenly I say, oh my God, they took my power. 
is the government that took my power? Is the Illuminati the ones that took my power? So you start to blame everyone and you start to judge and pre-judge everyone outside because you think that they got your power. And there we, we spent, we waste, we waste a lot of years blaming others for what I don't have. So let's remember that when I lose the power, it's not because someone took it from me. It's just because I don't know how to handle my own energy. I don't know how to manipulate my own energy and I am losing it. I don't know where. And this is why we used to say that are the outer systems that manipulate us. So basically, I say that they manipulate me because when I lose my control, when I lose my manipulation of myself, I start to manipulate emotionally the others because I need their energy. So what I'm starting to do it, what, what I'm what I'm starting to do is to take that energy and I start to depend from them. And when I depend from them, so they lose also energy. So they start to manipulate others to get the energy that they lost, that they lose because of me. So they start to depend from others. And that creates a big network of people that is dependent from people. And this is why it's so easy to manipulate society. This is why it's so important to take back my own power. And what is to take back your power? Is to know how to handle your own energy. And with, I am not denying that there are systems that are willing for it to keep going like this and control ourselves and control us, sorry. I'm not denying that. But what I am really doing is trying to explain that those systems were created by us. This that I has just said, we're going to discuss this in another month. But just know that we are going to speak about it. Let's go to the alignment. Today, the vibration we're going to use is the sound hu. The statement for today is, I am the spark of the creator. So the information, just information of today is the spiritual pattern Wa. The inception of everything that exists comes from the source. This is the nucleus of creation from where everything is emanated and to where everything returns. The return to the source is an inherent fate for every living being, for all that expands must go back, for infinite is, is not in, in the flat horizon, but in a sphere. Inception, inception is a constant cycle that reminds us that there is no beginning nor an end, but everything is a constant eternity. The wa song sound is the inception of all singings, the wanim, wanim in the Atlantean uh, mythology. So let's go to this. We start by caressing the body, stretching and yawning. So I start to relax the body as I stretch it. I leave, I leave the weight of my body to fall down. Focusing in my breathing. With my imagination, I start to bring 
the oxygen through my nose and go with it to the lungs, heart, blood, organs and muscles. I allow myself to feel the heat within my body and how it goes through my skin, expanding all around towards the sea of energy and vibration. I become aware of this ocean of emotion and feelings and above it the sun, the I am, shining. Take a deep breath and start to go up close to the surface as you feel how your body is moved by these waves. With every deep breath, it starts to go up and up, emerging from the ocean to the air. First your head. Feeling the water go down through all your face, eyes, ears, nose, lips, chin, neck. Feel the shoulders, arms, chest and back getting outside the water. Your arms belly and you stop by the hip the pubis leaving your wrist and hands below the water move your hands softly feeling the waves the limits of the water as I am outside I feel how the light of the I am starts to dry my skin and its light, its heat starts to penetrate my body and lighten my chakras, the crown, third eye, throat, heart, plexus and bringing all its light to the sacrum. Take a deep breath and recognize that in the sacrum you find all the energy, all the emotions that makes you be, that connects you with all this big ocean of emotions. I start to recognize that moving my hands I am able to move the waves of the sea to handle, manipulate the emotions this energy to create
inside of me, I can find the energy of life, the one that I can use to create. Bring the consciousness of the I am to the plexus, and as it shines, recognize that within yourself you can find all the potential and the energy as emotions that are the ones that helps you to create and recognize that you have the power to create not needing anyone just yourself So I start to pronounce the sound, moving my hands, touching the waves of this big ocean of emotion to make it in light and become it aware that this is the energy to create the energy that I am. Take a deep breath. Y comienzo a irradiar. And I start to irrigate. myself and power in this big ocean that is there just for me. I recognize I am the spark of creation. I am the spark of creation. I am the spark of creation. All the emotional world that I have projected in the outside, now I take it back to the source, to myself, and enlighten it. I am the spark of creation. Take a deep breath. Take my hands to my heart. I am the only one capable of manipulating my own energy. I am the only one to set the others free from the manipulation that I myself create. I am the only one capable to take back and generate my own energy and be the one by my own power to create. For I am the spark of creation. So I start to bring this consciousness from my heart, caressing, 
stretching and yawning. As I come back here and now, opening my eyes. Bien. O manipulo emocionalmente. So what I have to write down, the task for today, is what are the emotions that I manipulate in my life and who am I manipulating emotionally? Just one last thing for everyone that is doing this day by day. So tomorrow I have a group of 25 people that um, are coming to make um, um, to make um, uh, work here in in the three pyramids. So these next three days we're gonna be myself here speaking, you all of you there, and 25 people here with me doing all this together. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to write a lot these three days, but anyway I will try to leave you at least the idea of the day and the task of the day, okay? So as, al as always, um, drink a lot of water and um, rest very well. So see you tomorrow, as always, at the same time. See you tomorrow.